Hey, what's going on guys? So I had an awesome idea for today's video. Oh, what a fool I was. So young. So naive. You know, like most video game collectors, you kind of collect a little bit of everything. I mean, you know, I have some Super Nintendo games, Nintendo 64, Sega, Sega Saturn, and it got me thinking, what if I take one of my collections within the collection and use, uh, you know, price charting or maybe some kind of cataloging app to kind of see the value of, of the games, right? Surely this idea won't backfire. Surely the prices haven't changed too much. So I'm thinking about taking one of these collections getting the values of the games, I'm gonna take the top three expensive games I have, and then maybe go over it with you guys to say, hey, is this worth the price? What could go wrong? Surely, nothing could go wrong with this idea. Maybe, you know, maybe things have changed a little bit with uh, collecting, with the way the market is nowadays. And that, my friends, is the biggest understatement of the century. But regardless, you know, I'm gonna take the top three games of a specific collection and say, hey, is this worth it? So today, I figure I'm gonna take one of my smaller collections, we're gonna go into the GameCube, and you know, hey, if you guys like this kind of thing, let me know, because maybe we'll make a fun series out of it. But anyway, let's get going with my GameCube collection. Good choice, Wolf. Pick the GameCube collection. That's right. What could possibly go wrong with the humble GameCube collection? Oh. My God. So I don't know if it's like pandemic collecting or what, but I had no idea that my humble GameCube collection would be worth so much money. I'm not gonna lie, uh, I think out of my 39 total games, 28 of them all came from a single transaction. It was a pawn store and every single game was just two dollars They just said two dollars a game, whatever So I got the whole stack for like nothing In fact, I think because I got so many it was actually cheaper than two dollars a game because two dollars is actually the price They had marked but before I get going too far into this um, I do want to give a shout out to the Game Boy Player disc. It's not technically a game, but that disc itself and then with the Game Boy Player um, combined, like sold listings are extremely high. I mean like in the hundreds. Uh, that disc also reaching pretty high figures. Um, I just want to give a shout out to that one like I said. It doesn't really count as a game, but you know, uh, I was very much surprised when I started looking through the prices of these games that I have. Like never in my life would I think a Zelda game, just a regular bog standard Zelda game be over like hundred and twenty dollars, but hey, that's neither here nor there um, Starting with my most expensive top three. Let's go with number three So coming in at number three of my collection at two hundred and three dollars is Skies of Arcadia Legends now This is your yeah, kind of bog standard JRPG. It's a good one Like I'm not gonna say it's like really bad or anything, but it's it's just your turn-based JRPG about sky pirates Funny thing about this game, this is actually a remake. The original was on the Dreamcast. Now, there's actually pros and cons to both. And I will say that, uh, God, I don't know what the price is nowadays, but I do know from past history that Skies of Arcadia on the Dreamcast is also well, a pretty pricey game. Um, I, I would be very interested to see how much that game is now. However, talking about this game, the difference between the two is... Uh, on the whole, most people seem to say that the Skies of Arcadia on the Dreamcast has the better CD quality soundtrack, while the Skies of Arcadia on the GameCube, they tweaked the gameplay a bit, they got rid of some of the obnoxious grinding, and some of the stuff that made uh, Skies of Arcadia, uh, the original one, a little bit worse. But also, I think they added a little bit to this game as well. I will say though, uh, when recording this, I accidentally put in Tales of Symphonia first, which is another JRPG on the uh, on the GameCube, and uh, I did um, like I, it's it's not my top three as far as price, which is the whole point of this video. But I remember instantly being like, ah, you know what? Tales of Symphonia is like a way better game. <laughs> it is, it is. In my opinion, it is a way better game. But that said, this is my third most expensive game, Skies of Arcadia. You know, it's, it's gonna be hard for me to do this video to say if any of the games on this list are worth the price. Because me personally, you know, I was not thinking ahead when I started this. I did not ever think that these games would be worth so much money. But um, I will say that this game is really good, 
but in my mind, it's just not $203. I mean, it's very interesting. I like the combat. I like how the characters move around, kind of like Chrono Trigger. I also like how you can position yourself and the enemies based on what they're going to do to really make the combat a little bit better. The story's really cool. But I mean, 203 bucks for a JRPG. Uh, I've never spent that much on a on a turn-based RPG before. I've never spent that much on a non-collector's edition game before. But you know, hey, that's that's the third one, and uh, it only gets well, it only gets crazier from here. Now, for the second most expensive game in my very small collection, mind you, at two hundred and forty-six dollars, we are talking Chibi Robo. Chibi Robo for me personally doesn't even make like the cut of being in my alphabetical part of my shelf. For, for those of you who don't know, my games are all in alphabetical order and then when I get like too many games for a system and don't have enough room for like a whole nother shelf, I stack them on top. I put Chibi Robo on top. Like I'm not saying this is a bad game, but $246? Oh my god. Like so for those of you who don't know what this game is. Uh, not only are you battling the horrible camera controls, but you are battling time and trash. It's a it's a neat game. It's a cool concept. Basically, you are a toy robot living in a house, and you walk around and do little things. Mostly pick up garbage and spare coins to upgrade yourself. But as you get more battery life, you can venture further into the house without having to recharge or climb certain things or use certain tools and gadgets. It's cool. It's a it's a neat game. It kind of reminds me, um, not gameplay wise, but like feeling wise, it reminds me of a Katamari game. I mean, if you've ever played the Katamari games, they're kind of a weird, weird title. But I mean, two hundred and forty six dollars. There's no way. There's no way in the world that I can recommend. Oh yes, go out and pick up this game. I mean, maybe if you're really trying to complete your collection and this is the last one. But, I mean, my god, Chibi Robo Ziplash, the special edition version of that that came with an amiibo for like the uh, 3DS, you could pick that up at, at a GameStop for like 10 bucks with the amiibo and everything, game and everything. And that game is just a better version of this game. I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I, this, this list is very taxing. But once again, um, that is the second most expensive game in my collection for whatever reason. I mean, God, I have so many games, you know, that I would much rather play on the GameCube over this. But for some reason, this one just holds a very high value. Okay, so this game blew me away. This game really, when I saw the price of it, I, my jaw hit the floor. I had no idea. And the worst part is is unlike the last two games, which I was either lukewarm to okay on, this game's actually really, really good. And that is really what makes this the worst. And that is Gotcha Force. Uh, so Gotcha Force comes in at a whopping $449. We might as well just call it $450. You know, someone's gonna be paying a little bit of tax for shipping. But, oh my god, okay, I cannot, once again, I can't say that any single video game is worth $450. I love Mega Man Legends. I don't know if I could pay $450 for Mega Man Legends, but ah, it's such a bummer. This game is so good. All right, so what is this game? Think like um, Power Stone, but just ramped up. This is made by Capcom, and this is made back when Capcom was doing weird experimental stuff. Like they were making games, they're just throwing whatever they could at the wall. So Gotcha Force is basically based on the Gotcha Pawn, um, you know, like a quarter machine here in America, where you know you put in your quarter, you get a fun little thing. In Japan, you know, they have a ton of them, uh, mostly toys. And nowadays, um, a lot of uh, you know games of you know they call them Gotcha games on the cell phone. And, and they're based on the same concept. So what this game is, is basically like, you know, a big 3D arena brawler. It's awesome though. There are over 200 characters. And it's so weird, because when you start this game out, the characters just seem like you're like small, you know, kind of action figure kind of things. But then you start fighting boss type characters that are just 
massive. I mean, like, I'm talking like a floating battleship that shoots a laser bigger than anything. But the wild thing is, is you can unlock that as a character playable. Um, you make your own team. The teams uh, are based on points, so you can't make something extremely overpowered. But just on the whole, this game is really cool. Plot-wise, it's kind of a kid's game, I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, you're a kid and you're buying little toys and you're fighting other people. So I don't even really remember the plot. I mean, I have beaten this game, but it's been a very long time. The main draw is just going in and doing these crazy battles with this huge amount of characters. Um, it's extremely fun, and like I said, that's what hurts so much, because this game is good. This is the only way to play this game. It is a Capcom hidden gem. It is $449. Oh my god. You know, this whole video was supposed to be me saying, hey, here's the three most expensive games of blank collection. This one happens to be the GameCube. And can I recommend it for the price? And sadly, I don't think I can recommend any of these games for the price. And if this series continues, I don't know if I'll be able to recommend any game for the price just in general, but I don't know. You know, do you guys play uh, any of these games? Do you have any of these games for your GameCube? Because I'm telling you, you might want to start looking because you might be sitting on a gold mine. So like I said, that was a shock to my system. I can't believe that those games are worth that much money. I, you know, it's hard for me to recommend them as a game, you know, for that price. I mean, who would pay that much for a single game? And granted, they're great games, don't get me wrong. But I mean, maybe as an investment? I don't know. Uh, this really threw me for a loop. And this is the first set of games I've tried using the price charting uh, method on. So let me know down below if you think these games are worth it or any game is worth that much money. Or also, let me know if you want me to kind of keep this series going. Because, I mean, we did GameCube. I got plenty to mess with, obviously. But uh, I don't... I don't know. I, I don't know. Hey, that's gonna do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. I'd love to love to have you around. Uh, please comment down below on anything. Maybe my cool hat. I really don't care. Um, probably about the video, though. But hey, uh, as we always say here, man, hey, take it easy.